everybody. Today I got another video informing you about chunk loading micro 4.15 and I want to show you a honey or honeycomb farm that you can run 24-7 without a player nearby. It's kind of hard to get a lot of honey or honeycomb so having something running in the background is actually quite nice. Also I want to point out that Gnemon made an excellent video about chunk loading yesterday. Definitely also check it out. It's in the video description. But here's the quick summary. You might remember that I did a video in the snapshots a couple of weeks ago showing you how I can make a permaloader. Uh, quickly after my video was released, chunk loading mechanics got changed again and the yeah, contraption we got here in the back with two portals is now overcomplicated, but it would still be a valid chunk loader. But you can make it a lot easier now again. To quickly sum it up, chunk loading works again like in Minecraft 1.14. So the problem in the 1.15 snapshots was that if you would send an entity through a nether portal, it kept the other side loaded for exactly 300 ticks and then unloaded. And there was nothing you can do to prevent that unloading, except using a second portal and load that area from another position. Um, but that's not necessary anymore to use a second portal, because every time you send an item through a portal, it would refresh that 300 tick timer. Um, and as long as you keep sending entities every 300 ticks or more frequently, then uh, the chunks on the other side would never unload. So one portal is now enough. Uh, of course, you also need to send the entity back because yeah, well, if you send the entity to the nether, you only keep the nether side loaded. And vice versa, of course, if you send the entity now to the overworld, you would keep the overworld area loaded. The range of the portal hasn't changed. Um, I need to quickly sum it up again. So you would um, load a 7x7 chunk area around the nether portal. The 3x3 chunks around it are entity processing, one chunk further out is reds and component processing and another chunk further out only yeah mobs are well, kept in the mob entity list and count towards the mob cap um, but yeah more information about that either in my older videos about this or in Gnambon's video all right now the actual topic of the video is well that new chunk loader and the honey farm that are and the honeycomb farm that i've built in a the honey or honeycomb farm is one of the very few farms that work without a player being nearby. So that means if you would build it in your spawn chunks, you would get a constant supply of honey or honeycomb while you're doing something else in the world. But there's one downside to it. The spawn chunks are located, of course, in the overworld, and as I've shown in a previous video, that's not as good as building the farm in the nether end dimension. The reason is at nighttime, bees would uh, enter the hive and not leave it again until it's daytime. And the same applies also to yeah, rainy weather or thunderstorms. They would enter the hive and not leave until that condition is over again. So you can build your honey honeycomb farm in the spawn chunks, but the better alternative would be to build it in the nether dimension. Unfortunately, there are no spawn chunks in the nether. In order to keep the nether loaded, you just need to build this little contraption here, both on the overworld and the nether side. And then your honey honeycomb farm would work while you're not actually there. So actually do a little test. So as you can see, both of those chests are now empty. Gonna go to overworld, fly a couple hundred blocks away, and just wait for one hour. And then we can see yeah, what we actually got in that time. So that's about right. Definitely not loading that portal anymore. And just gonna do a little tick warp for one hour now. So that was now one hour. Let's head back. Check on the progress. Should have gotten about a hundred honey. <laughs> so let's see. Yeah, there we go. We got six stacks. That's 96 plus eight, 104 honey. And about 300 honeycomb. Yep, that's about right. Almost five stacks. In the same time, if you would have built this farm in the spawn chunks, yeah, you would have gotten maybe a factor of two to two and a half less. 
there's one little downside of building a honeycomb farm in the nether dimension compared to the end dimension, which by the way, you can't chunk load. Chunk loading or keeping areas loaded only works with the nether portals. And of course, you can't have nether portals in the end dimension. End portals don't work. All right, let's get back to the little disadvantage. It's that you can't have water in the nether. And that means if you yeah would make farmland, it converts back into dirt after a while. So why this is at a disadvantage? Well, you could actually use this little trick of putting your flowers on top of farmland. And if you would have a hopper below, they can directly pick up the items. The problem a bit with the honeycomb farm, we would actually generate three honeycomb items at once if you shear the hive. Is that, yeah, you get three items at once and they can't be picked up by one hopper below, like with the honey farm. And usually the items spray to the side um, and yeah, it would easily be picked up by still a hopper below the, the hive, or you could just place a hopper below the farmland and pick it up. As you can see, you can pick up the items this way. Of course, we don't have that option in the nether. Sooner or later, it will revert back to dirt. Technically, if you would build this really quick and leave the area, never come back, then it would also be fine, but it's not really an option. So in order to deal with this, this issue, we have to use a hopper minecart. I don't see any other way without using hopper minecarts and you have to surround the farm a little bit of blocks in order to force them to well yeah get shot out to the, to the open side and all land on the dirt so this seems like it's more like 99% efficient I think there's still some item loss of 1% but I think it's good enough it's not like with the honey farm we would waste bottles um, with the honeycomb farm having a 1% loss is not really important nobody cares about that really. Um, maybe yeah since somebody suggested it last time using a wizard rose and a soul sand which you can also use to uh, pick up items through it doesn't work. The bee is actually attracted by the wizard rose and would try to pollinate it well but it's also getting killed by it. So you can actually also breed bees with the wizard rose um, but yeah it would also kill the bee so that's not an option. Now let's also talk about the little chunk loading system I got here, because that's also kind of new. Previously, I always used items to load the other dimension side. So I just shot an item through a portal, picked up the item there and sent it back to the overworld. Um, but yeah, Gremlin recently showed that there's a really small chance, but it could happen, that an item gets such an extreme ease of velocity and direction that it would be not picked up via hopper minecart directly below um, either the portal or the obsidian below. So previously basically used this setup um, to catch the item. But there's a really small chance, so I haven't seen it myself happening. I tested it for 50 hours, but apparently there's a really small chance. So Cycraft has also confirmed it, that it would not be picked up. And that would basically break the permaloader. So what Gnemon did was to align the item with pistons and then shoot it through a portal to get around this small reliability issue. But I thought maybe get, let's get rid of the randomness entirely. So as you can see, the dropper is always random. Shoots the item a bit in a random direction and also gets a yeah, random velocity. In order to get rid of randomness entirely, let's just use a minecart dispenser. In terms of lag friendliness, it should be about the same. The, the minecart entity most of the time is just stored away in the dispenser. And yeah, we just every, in this case, 14.6 seconds, it's getting dispensed, sent to the nether dimension, and it's getting sent back. Unfortunately, we can't just uh, yeah, put a turn there and send the minecart back through the portal right away because there's the portal cooldown of entities. So if you would try that in the the minecart would just sit inside of the portal and not get sent back. In order to get around this, we have to break the minecart in the nether dimension as well with the cactus and dispense it again. So the minecart is basically just broken here, gets transferred over the dispenser, uh, and then we read out a signal and power the rail and the dispense at the same time and send it back to the overworld. Just waiting for the next one. And that's it. Yeah, in the overworld. Minecart also comes out here at this side. It's getting broken by the cactus again. It sits in the dispenser until it's getting activated by the clock. Yeah, and now you can just walk away from this contraption here and it would keep the nether and the overworld side loaded 100% of the time.
So here's how you can build a new permaloader for Minecraft 1.15. So of course we need a nether portal and a dispenser here for the minecarts and two hoppers connecting to it like this. Then we need a block here in the back and another block here and of course also sand and cactus to break the minecart. Place it down. And then also rails. Okay, here it works out for me if placing it. Sometimes you might need to break the portal to place the rails, uh, but I need them like this. All right, then next we also need to power the golden rails here. Just place them to redstone torches. And then you need to activate this dispenser here Yeah, at least every 15 seconds. I guess the best way to do it would be using a hopper clock. So you can build this pretty much anywhere. Just gonna build it here on the side. Standard hopper clock with 19 items in it. Let's get a redstone dust real quick. Hoppers pointing it into each other and of course sticky piston and redstone block at top. And let's put in 19 items. So then the kind of the cycle length is um, 292 ticks. And then just torch here to trigger the dispenser. All right, let's put in a minecart in there. It will be sent to the nether dimension soon. Just gonna wait for it, to, just to see where the minecart comes out on the other side. There we go. Okay, the minecart comes out here. I actually was testing earlier. So here we basically build up the same, just without the clock. So again, rails. Yeah, here we actually have to break the portal real quick. Place the rails in the right orientation. And of course, sand and cactus again. A block here in the back. And now we need a comparator. And redstone torch, block, and a repeater on four ticks at the top. Okay, this will then both trigger dispenser and powder rails here. Just need torch on this side. Technically, it could be a tiny bit of a problem that like pigmen would run into this and mess with the minecart. So what I did was actually uh, place some blocks here above the rails and also prevent the cactus from growing, but well, if you're not near this contraption, then there also won't be any pigment nearby because they just despawn. So this might not actually be necessary. All right, yeah, that's about it. Let's try it out. Let's put in another minecart and let's see if it comes back. And here it comes again, it's stored nicely in the dispenser. I tested this, by the way, for I think more than 50 hours, it was maybe 70 hours with tick warp. This thing is really reliable. There's also no chance that the, uh, the item that is getting, yeah, or that my card is getting uh, broken by the cactus or that the item would get lost somehow. So this is 100% reliable. All right, now the honey or honeycomb farm itself. I recently made a really detailed tutorial video about how to build the honey or honeycomb farm and also how you can get the bees, breed them and move them. So I will just link to that video again in the video description. Check that out if you want to build a farm. But if you take a look at it, it's actually not, <laughs> not that hard to build. It's kind of one wide tileable. Um, the only change with the honeycomb farm compared to my tutorial video is that it's built in the Nether Dimension and we have this hopper minecart going below the farm. Um, yeah, also take a look at where I placed blocks here in order to prevent the items from flying out. So place them here on the side as well. And also here this glass on the side is built up too high. It's kind of missing here. You can put in more shears into those hoppers um, to keep it refilled. But if you just fill up the dispenser completely with shears, it would also already last quite a long time. 
the size of your farm definitely depends a little bit on the range of the chunk loading. So we got nine chunks where we can build this farm. So the chunk that the portal is in and then an outer ring of eight chunks around it. So that's where you can build your honey or honeycomb farm. Um, and if you would go further out, well, then the entities or the bee entities are not processed anymore. So you need to stay within those nine chunks. But there's actually quite a lot of space. It's 48 by 48, and the Y value doesn't matter. If you are playing on a vanilla server, this actually also works while you're not even actively playing on the server. But yeah, keep in mind that it's a little bit of lag. A farm of this size shouldn't really matter much, but make sure the other players are okay with that or the server owner. Then, yeah, one more thing. You need to come back to this contraption after a server restart. So if you either leave your single player world or the server restarts, you need to come back here and load it um, once um, just yeah, to keep it running again. Because it doesn't load itself after server restart or if you leave your single player game. Alright, so that's about it. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.